favor. This is one more. Just turn on your radio in the morning and listen to some motherfuckers talk about some, some bullshit. Actually, that was, like, something that I always wanted to do, that, that I had a mind to do, like, working in the radio station. Um, but I, I, I even, uh, I used to listen to it a lot. Y luego... Pepito? No, Pepito <laughs> no. Era, and it, it estaba, they actually, it, it was a mega 107.9, I mm. think. It was in Houston. Uh, porque tocaban puro pop en español y rock en español. Ay, tu pura melanova, chinga. A huevo. <laughs> puro, puro corazón de bombón. <laughs> and then, um, they got, they got, I mean, I guess it didn't, like, the market wasn't as big as it could be right now. <coughs> but they, they ended up turning into a ranchera, like a, a regional radio station. Hey, that's what's saying with the kids, man. Pura fuerza regida. Puro, puro corrido tumbado. Corrido. Puro, puro Natanael. Sí, güey. <laughs> Grupo firme. Ey, nomás pregúntale al mi carnal, al Fernandío. ¿O ese güey es un che de tlacuache? Es tlacuache, güey. <laughs> Trocando acá, ya quema acá. Yeah, yeah he's, uh, he, he's quema no quema acá en his little hybrid. <laughs> 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 nah, dude, but uh, that's interesting that you talk about uh, the radio porque este, I don't know if I ever told you, you, you know Raúl Brindis? Sí. Real famous like sports or um, radio personality. I played club soccer with uh, Raúl Brindis Jr. Oh wow! Yeah. So growing up, he was a forward and uh, incredible forward because he was faster than anybody else I've ever seen on the field mm -hmm. at that age. But then I guess we all kind of grew up and like, you know, like everybody's physicality started becoming the same. Mm -hmm. Um, but I enjoyed playing with them, and it was really cool. That was like my first view into. Oh, this is this is like, you know, this is what it's like to have a, a life, you know, pretty well off. Porque me invitaba a su casa, and I go to his house. So you go to Raúl Brindis, le conocías y todo. Sí, I go to Raúl Brindis, la mamá de ese, you know, su esposa or whatever, and. uh Dude, they had a pool, and it was, like, salt water, and then they would change colors. Mm -hmm. They had an elevator in the house. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, nah, it was funny, because, you know what? We had a tournament in uh, San Antonio. Yeah. And I'll never forget this, because uh, we go to this 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 restaurant on the Riverwalk, and, we're like, the team is, like, a U15, mm -hmm. chavalos. And our parents are getting drunk on margaritas, you know, like, echándole con el Raúl Brindis. Yeah. Y que sale el mariachi. Oh, and shit. you remember Raúl at the time, he had yeah. his little singing career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, he starts, like, singing some rancheras. And, of course, my dad, you know, con being, él. being the Mexicano that he is, sabe los gritos, and he would start singing, too. But it was crazy. All the parents had way more fun than the kids. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> they were getting the thrown, kids were bro. Like, not, like, they were asleep, and the parents were over here fucking twerking. They were, they were getting thrown, and we were like, we, got, we, got a, we, we have a game at 8 a.m. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> How was it for the parents the day after? No, pues estaban todos crudos, güey. Nomás con sus lentes oscuros. Just, like, shades there, kind of blocking that shit off. But, uh, dude, crazy memories from that club. I'll be in Hurricanes. Uh, dang, that's, like, fucking south, uh, north, northeast. Yeah, I played for the Albion Hurricanes in Houston. That was my club team, and uh, I had a lot of great memories. A lot of knocks to the head. It's probably why I forget a lot of things, and I'm not right. All the way, I got like, a couple screws loose. I have one knock in my head all the time. Javier, ¿cómo se llama? Knock, my oh, wife. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> hey, shout out Knock, man. Shout out Knock. Hey, like, we got a lot of October birthdays, don't we? Yeah, dude. Uh, este, está esta, uh, la tía Fagu. Alicia Fagus, she's her Felicidades, birthday. Tia Fagu. Felicidades, y ahí nos vemos el sabadito. Oh, dang, man. Happy birthday to her. Um, um, I just finished, uh, we just celebrated last week the uh, birthday of my wife. Oh, yeah, happy birthday, was, Madison. It was amazing. We, we had a great time. We ate at Ludi's, really nice restaurant mm -hmm. at the Commodore Perry Estate. Super bougie, man. It was, the food was phenomenal, too. So if you're ever looking for, like, a nice romantic spot, I recommend Ludi's. Ludis, ahí. And if you guys use a coupon, otro por favor, you guys get 50% off. 
<laughs> it might work, it might not, but you just try it. Um, <laughs> no, nah, it's funny. Every time I'm in a really nice restaurant, I'm looking around, and, you know, sometimes they have, like, you know, the French waiter or something like that. And I'm like, no matter what type of food it is, I promise you, if you look in that kitchen. De la pinche raza. A la raza. Están los mexicanos. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Están los centroamericanos. Están los sudamericanos. Está la gente ahí cocinando. And you know where they're, you know, you know. You that, know that shit's good. You know that shit's good. <laughs> yeah, it's not bland. <laughs> Pun intended. Do what, as, as I clear the red ash también. And you know, like, you walk in, everybody's all like, it's a pretty cool place. Uh, pero ves ahí, el asador está enfrente casi de, de ti. And, you know, all the waiters, they're, you know, pretty diverse. Pero lo que está atrás, ahí en la cocina, güey, todo el pinche, el, el José, el, el Raúl, el Saúl, el David, todos güeyes ahí. Yeah. Pues no en la parrilla, güey. And you already know, like, they're listening to something because you're, like, you having their own little good moment right there. I, you know, I'm not going to lie. Maybe this is a controversial take, but sometimes if I go somewhere and I see that the people preparing my food are not, like, Latin American, like, you know, like, with, I question it. I'm like, man, I don't know. Like, the service is going to be weird. You know, like, something's going to be off. Like, it's I'm either going to get it and it's not going to hit right, but... Hey man, and you know, most of the people that work there in the kitchen don't have papers. Now it is a good way to like, hey, you know, come up with something because they're coming up like all the good food. Imagine if all those cooks were gone. Like immigration comes oh, tomorrow. That, they made say, a movie like that, right? They were yeah, Mexican. They were Mexican. Say, a todos. I mean, you're literally going to have nobody in the kitchen or housekeeping or whatnot. But I mean, hey, shout out to my raza out there. Dándole. Y mientras tú comiendo tu risotto, eso es valiendo verga atrás. <laughs> For sure, man. And I don't know how we got into it, man, but this is uh, episode 63 of Otra Por Favor. How are you today, Koke? I'm feeling amazing, dude. Honestly, nah, I'll backtrack. I was feeling like shit. Um, this whole week has been really stressful for me. Mm -hmm. But... Um, ¿A quién le echamos la culpa? <sighs> man, you can't... I can't blame anyone, man. All I could blame is, like... Fucking life, you know, like work life. It's it's one of those weeks where uh, no matter how many things you can get done, <coughs> everything is just stacking up and stacking up and you're yeah. just kind of treading water. But it's all good, man, because as soon as I was like, I knew we were about to record, as soon as I was prepping for this episode, I was watching like all the soccer highlights of some of the things we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. I got so happy, dude. It's, it's like good, man. the power of football, the power of, of, of your friends and mm -hmm. of your network, like you just have to think about it. Visualize it, mm -hmm. and you feel immediately better. Man, tell you what, same here. Like this morning, like work has been busy también. But I feel like, you know, I've also been busy with some projects too. So woke up tired. Uh, and also because of the change of weather, as I'm getting older, every time it changes from cold to hot or hot to cold, in those three days, me siento de la, de la patada. Because, you know, my body's getting adjusted. So this morning I woke up, and I woke up with like, it felt like like a fever, but I didn't have a fever. It was just, you know, my body was like hurting, like aching, and I was like, "Fuck, dude! Hopefully it's not COVID." So it's not, thank God. Um, but you know, you just, the change of weather. But I mean, yo fui a la, a la tienda con un tank top pensando que era que era que era el verano, y so the, you went with the, the Richie away uniform. The my Richie away uniform. The, yeah, the Richie home uniform is a black shirt. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, nah, but but uh, I would say I worked out, and you know that helped a lot. And you know, came here, had a Red Bull, y orale. So I, I guess one of those that once once you sit down and you you know you get everything already organized, everything is like all right, we're 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 we're, we're good. We're sitting down, man. It's just me and you. So uh, take your time. Take Let's it, do it. Take it slow. <laughs> Take it slow. <laughs> Are we gonna, is, is that oh, that's a new uh, soundtrack, by the way. That's gonna be coming out on the second uh, disc. Yeah, just you and me. Take so it take slow. Take your time. <laughs> take it slow. Uh, and it's gonna be a featuring with Lady A. So, pa que pa que queme más acá, corte más venas. Nah, real talk. But it's an amazing time of the year, dude. Like yeah? the weather's getting, frankly, my favorite. Nice and chilly. We got foot. We got MLS playoffs. We got. Liga Mekis playoffs, we got La Liga, Premier League, all these European leagues popping off. F1 is coming to Austin this weekend. You and have Checo. Checo. Checo Perez is here. Um, 
so the city's already buzzing, man. Not only that, but you got the baseball playoffs kind of going off it. I know we got a lot of Astros fan, you know, got to rep for the H. When it comes to the Astros, we rep for the H. Nah, man, it's all about <laughs> Dodgers. <laughs> well, although we're already out, so it sucks. Yeah, so. Um, but I mean, Post Malone is actually also coming on Saturday. Uh, I was going to work, <laughs> and I had uh, I already had, like said, he has to work, but then. Uh, la tía Fagu me invitó a su fiesta y dije, no, se le va a caer. Y aparte es la fiesta de mi, de mi suegro también. Priorities, Richie. I know, right? Priorities. So, that, um, and este, what's, an, what's something else that we have that we forgot to mention? Uh, the city of Austin is not meant for, to take in this many people at this time. The specific time so we have a lot of people coming in from everywhere specifically the ones that i want to highlight are my dallas buddies or actually uh, my frisco buddies yeah uh, there's a little bit of a hotel shortage uh unfortunately they can't find a place to stay so um you know richie here has been generous enough to offer his hyperware studios now <laughs> <laughs> bullshit i got caught on must be another richie because the richie is oh 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 Oh, man. Oh, oh, oh. But, oh, man. dude, so they're actually having a bad week, I know, be right before the game. Um, yes, sir. Because, one, they can't find a hotel for the players. Man, just try, make it drive back. It's only three hours away. Too young. Let's un partido. Right? And they're not driving. They're going to, I mean, they already have a driver. They're going to be in a bus, in a nice bus. Con aire acondicionado y todo. That, and then also the... El Matador, which is one thing that I'm actually not agreeing to, and I, and I I feel like this thing right here is killing the culture. El Matador is their their supporters group. The supporter group for for, uh, for uh, Frisco FC. Frisco, and then someone I think it was someone in the state was it Hernan or someone made a, a analogy Brian mm-hmm. Bernan or someone on Top Flight. I was listening to their their episode, and they 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 mentioned about how they're very contradicting because their logo is a bull, right, for Dallas. Mm-hmm. And their supporters is El Matador. El Matador is the one who kills the res. Yeah. Es un matador de toros. ¿Cómo, cómo, quiere, cómo tienes a tu supporter siendo el matador de tu, de tu logo? Yeah. Es como si yo le digo el, la, el serrucho de, a, a, a los verdes, los serruchos. Y tenemos de logotipo un árbol. <laughs> I mean, you got a point there, but I mean... We we definitely we definitely went on the fan side and on the on the logic side behind our supporters groups, but I mean, I had I had never even thought of that, man. Me either. I was like, and I need to like, oh, dang, that's actually a pretty. How good. M- how many how many ways can we beat Dallas without having beat Dallas first? <laughs> I don't know. Well, also the <laughs> shitty ass taco that they brought out. <laughs> that's oh, not yeah. even a taco, man. That's yeah. a like that's a throw up and not even a tortilla. It's a throw up and whatever they put in there. Hey, that that taco got so much publicity. I was like, dude, what? Is, I didn't know there was like that was even an option. Is there? Is that like a Taco Bell thing or what? I guess I don't know, but I guess they don't know about tacos because the tacos that we have, you know, paprika, cuantos tacos, el güero, el Charlie. It's unfortunate because you know uh, I go to Dallas a lot because my my wife and her family's from Dallas. So Sorry to hear about that. It's. It's a it's it's a great city. I like going there. Uh, there's a lot of good food options. Um, in particular, they got some tacos. Um, I forget the name of this place, but it's somewhere around like Oak Cliff. But um, I just feel like what that club, that stadium, that yeah. environment is not truly representative of Dallas. So we're very fortunate here in Austin, Texas, that our club, our stadium is in our city and has local places from our city and you know it it really promotes the cuisine that we have here available Mm -hmm. there are many other places like more independent or more kind of growing Mm -hmm. that need to get highlighted more too but i think we're lucky that we don't have to uh spend 16 dollars on the uh gross um comical looking shell as taco yeah we probably get to expense (laughs) 16 dollars from some other bullshit like electric (laughs) yellowfish but i mean that's an (laughs) option but it was just like, that's just gross. Like, that's not even a taco. That's one <laughs> thing that I'm like. And on top of that, just to add a little more salt to the wound, um, I was looking at this this video. And I'm going to see if I can share the link. And I'm going to ask the guy that, you know, that made it. And they're talking about, like, the 10 worst um, seed, like stadiums that should be, like, usually first, first stadiums 
you would think of the city and the name of the stadium in the same place, right? Mm -hmm. And in this one right here, this guy is talking about uh, how some of these stadiums are, you know, pretty good place, like downtown or close to, you know, the heart, and how some stadiums are, like, far away. And, like, Houston. I'm not a Houston fan, but they have the stadium right downtown. Great location. Good location. E East downtown, Edo. Now, yeah. And they should take advantage of the situation where they're at because – Perfect. Where, it's where a lot, it's at. a lot of good spots to eat and drink around there. Yeah, have, have a good time. And they were talking about like Vancouver has a good stadium and a good place. And they're saying one of the worst, Dallas. They're like, you cannot name your team FC Dallas when your, you know, your stadium is like thirty minutes or you know twenty five miles out of you know at the heart of downtown. Like you should name it Frisco, not Dallas. Yeah, that makes sense. Or the Cowboys también. They're in Arlington. They're not in Dallas either. For sure. I mean, I guess Dallas is making a habit of building their stadiums and their teams around other suburban areas. But so, bro, I just wanted to kind of summarize what we're going to get into today. We already kind of got into a little Austin FC. We're mm -hmm. definitely going to touch on the, the playoff win and uh, looking forward to our game against Dallas as well. Real shortly, um, we would want to touch a little bit on the World Cup. Mm -hmm. You know, we're less than a month away from the World Cup. Does it feel like it? Nah, dude. I don't think so. I, I think because we have so many, so much stuff going on, like this particular week, that it does not feel like it. To me, I think this is like the worst organized World Cup slash, you know, kind of frankly, kind of embarrassing World Cup that it it hasn't really gotten the promotion other World Cups have gotten. Mm -hmm. we're, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. We also got tons of action in the European leagues. We're going to touch a little bit on the Premier League, what's been going on there with some of the top teams, as well as the classical result of this past weekend, mm -hmm. which uh, put a dagger in my heart that was taken out and healed by the Austin FC win later that day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my, my America también. <laughs> we lost yesterday, but it was a close call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we can, yeah, we can touch a little bit on Liga Vecchis too, why not? And then, of course, we wanted to touch on the uh, Ballon, Ballon de, Or, uh, de Oro este Awards um, with uh, some of the new, newly crowned uh, champions of individual Mystic Soccer. So, let's get into it, brother. Yeah, man. Uh, now, did you go to the game uh, against este Arzel? Yes. That's a lake. Dude. Emphatically, yes. I everyone kept asking me before if I was going to go to the game, and I kept saying something like, "I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure. It's uh, I, I got, I might have something to do that weekend, mm -hmm. might not." Plans opened up, and I made a last minute decision to go. Um, I bought a ticket, like literally, the game had already started, and I bought a ticket, and I was still at home, like 20 minutes away from the stadium. So hauled ass, got there, parked at the Hyperware Studios, ran my ass off. Like, I was running, and mm -hmm. I could hear, like, the national anthem going on and shit. So you're like, like, oh, crap, crap, crap. Yeah, yeah, I get there. <clears throat> I'm sweating. Uh, I go straight for the water fountain, and then I just, I had gotten a supporter section ticket. by, And by that time, by the time I got there, it was already, like, minute 20. Mm -hmm. We were 2-0 down. Yeah. What? I was like, what the fuck? Is That's it? what I said whenever it's, the game started. It's, it's like a nightmare. I was like, this is night a nightmare start to a game. And uh, I get to the supporter section. <clears throat> That's the la madre. It's packed like sardines, bro. I'm like, <laughs> where am I going to sit? So I keep going in and out, and I keep get, getting told by security, hey, you can't stand in the aisle. Hey, you can't stand in the stairs. I'm like, all right, okay. So I finally found a little corner, a little niche to, to, to chill out in and uh, watch the game. Um, great view. Had a lot of fun. And what a game, dude. What an, I'm so glad I made the decision to, go, to come to the game, uh, even if uh, it wasn't planned, I think, because it was – out of the blue, I, I enjoyed it so much more, dude. I uh, I was surprised whenever I saw your your story that you went, um, but that was good. I'm glad that you ended up going. Uh, and did you end up selling your liver, your kidney to go? How how was that process? <laughs> no, nah, man. No, actually, we 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 my wife and I we racked up a lot of like reward points on some on some uh, one of, one of our travel cards and like yeah. we just. Bank some of those in because it was like, why not? And uh, yeah, I basically didn't have to pay the, the with, with any money to go to go uh, to the game. So I was like super lucky in that regard. Man, it was a it was a game that I mean we lose. I think I think it's a guaranteed 
Every time Austin FC plays, we're gonna play thinking there's gonna be a goal against us in the bag. And then we'll and the game starts after we, you know, after the two goals that we get scored on the one goal. We love to suffer. We love to trail from the back. We love to yeah. we love to just claw back at games. We're like that uh we're like that guy that or, or girl that that just likes that the, the toxicity a little bit. You know what Masochista. I mean? Yeah, it's like, well, you know, if we're not in a fucked up situation, are we even having fun? I think that's how <laughs> I like to live life sometimes, man. I realize that it's boring when everything goes well. Man, dude, I cannot relate because my favorite game has been the one against LAFC, uh -huh. and we didn't, it did not feel like it felt this weekend. Um, but, yeah, I mean, why do we like to suffer, Richie? Dude, do you, I don't know, but I feel like this game in particular reflected the whole season for us. I mean, we won in penales, but it was just it reflected everything. I mean, the moments that we're down, but like how we say, and I feel like that's you know our motto, even louder when we're down. Because if there's one thing that we have is la murga and las verdes coming in hard. But from not just the game itself, but from a couple of hours beforehand, when it was the the march to the stadium with hasta la muerte, you know, banner, and then my boy. Este Joe Corral dropping the TIFO. The TIFO was amazing, dude. That was beautiful. Uh, I, and for me, it was cool because I got to take a picture of it. Um, and for, from that, like, it was just like, man, the game, you know, could have gone differently. I think so. Um, pero it didn't, like, that, you know, didn't fall on the supporters. I feel like, you know what, it's just the game. But... It was electric, especially Stuber. For me, looking at him, whenever you're you know outside of the game and you're looking at the game and you look at his reaction, every time we get scored on or every time something happened, he would look at the crowd and he would just be like, "Okay, it's time for me to you know put in whatever I can to make it happen." Which in the penalties he came through and blocked two. And one of them actually it was like a rebound, like a zigzag up and down. Luckily, it didn't hit his his ass or his you know his heel because he could have gone in, right? But oh, it was beautiful, a magical moment that hurts. No, dude, definitely like it was the shit start. Two minutes and fifty three seconds, you get scored on. Mm -hmm. um, it looked like we started flat footed, you know, like Gabrielson said, lost his lost his man um, a little bit before that. Fagu. Um, was maybe a little a little slow to, to apply pressure to the guy that whipped mm -hmm. in the cross. But, I mean, it's just evident that the team started dormidos. Yeah. Um, just look just looking back at the game. And then the unfortunate handball by Valencia um, mm -hmm. in minute 11 that caused a penalty for RSL um, just puts you in a, in a deep hole. Yeah. But one thing that, that, that I think we, we've said it again and again, we could all be confident in, is that, you know we're we're okay. We're okay with uh, counter punching. We're okay with uh, being on the ropes, mm -hmm. and I think that's that shows that we have the mentality of champions. We have the mentality of champions because we we're never out of the game. We're mm -hmm. never out of the game. So, not my favorite way to win. To to you know, the the goal by Sebastian Drusi making it two one mm -hmm. in the first half. Amazing goal, and then. Go uh, RSL going down ten men after that challenge into Stuver, mm -hmm. circumstantial things that kind of allowed us to just completely dominate the game statistically, yeah. but the final touch wasn't there until until we get we get awarded the penalty uh, in the in the dying minute of the second half, and Sebastian Drusi scores from the from the PK spot uh, making his brace, mm -hmm. you know those types of things you you kind of think of. Rigoni had a couple of sitters that he could have scored. Um, Sebs ha Se Sebastian had one off the post. Yeah, the team created chances. Um, it, it just wasn't coming through. Gabrielson had a header, yeah. and, and and it's one of those things that like okay against RSL, fine. We're gonna claw back. We're gonna depend on Stuver to save our ass mm -hmm. in penalties because he can. He's capable of it. Right. I I tweeted before the penalties. Stewart is made for this moment. And yeah. He 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 more than proved me right. He he did his own thing to a different level because it was like near perfect. Yeah. Even the one that, that was scored on him, he could have saved. It was close enough, it just went right under him. It, it just circumstances of the game. Um and one thing that I have is like 
we did a lot of crossing mainly because you can only build so much game and, and you know, technicality and triangles outside of the box when you have almost nine players inside of their own box. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, it was packed. Like, Arso, Arso was playing for the penalty kicks. Like, yeah. they were banking on going to penalties. Right. Uh, which which they got. Um, they didn't count on Seward being such a badass. But that's that's life. That's football. Mm-hmm. Um, I di- speaking on crosses, the uh, sub of Komenich, and he's someone that's gotten criticism throughout the entire season. He did a pretty good job Some at people even, holding the ball. even saying that he should just leave or he shit and he shouldn't play, but... He, we got to give credit to him because he came in with an mm-hmm. intensity, whipping in balls of like quality, quality balls into the box. Yeah, taking shots from 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 out from outside the box. Like the guy knows what he's good at, and he he'll take advantage of it. Um, and he took advantage of it in that moment. So credit to him. Um, also, I want to give credit to um, Kurt Lammers. We've had him here before. He's pretty much. Every time there's a song going on, he's the one that orchestrates the song before it starts. He does that one, two, three, and then they start playing it. His hands started cramping uh, towards the end of the, like, before the penalty. Like, he started, like, I've never seen, you know, he's usually, like, going at it. But when you play the drums, you're holding a stick for so long. And when you're, you know, you're, you're holding it with impact. And his hands started cramping, like, I saw him go like this. And he's like, man. And I was like, dude. I feel you, but he's like, nah, hell no, I'm, I'm not going to stop. So, shout out to him. Shout out to La Murga. <laughs> they, they just went at it. I feel like from the sports side, they they put in everything, not just them, but like everyone else in, in, you know, in the stadium. Damn, dude. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Kurt had a whiplash moment. Dude. Just, have you seen that movie, Whiplash? Whiplash, no. Oh, uh, bro. It's about a drummer. Yeah. It's fucking crazy, man. <laughs> he, uh, I mean, I'm not going to fucking tell you the whole synopsis of the movie, but there's a lot of scenes where like, you're looking at his hands and they're like bleeding because yeah. he's like drumming so hard yeah. and so long. But yeah. I guess that's what happened to Kurt. <laughs> I know, man. Probably I was about to say, hey, bro, let me, let me, let me, I got you, bro. Something, I don't know, let me take over or whatever. Does the Murga have their own like, like, uh, masajistas that go out there and like, all right, here you go, pinche yellow, fucking the magic spray? Shh. I might, I might apply for that position. <laughs> I might. Hey, man, my, my people gotta be, you know, good to go. Yeah. So they can perform. So I might apply for the position. I yeah. know a couple, you know, things we can do. Okay, yeah, oh, else. oh, you get into some other stuff. Yeah, you yeah. get into some <laughs> other stuff. Nah, nah, but uh, nah, I do, I do. Uh, it just it, it was good. It was, it was. Uh, I think I feel like something that we need. You know, we need to live all kind of different scenarios, and this is one that we've never had. And it's gonna be to build a precedent because now you know you can do it at the end of the day. Austin, you, Austin, Texas gets a playoff win. When was when was the last time we could say something like that? Even for UT Longhorns, when was the last time we could say that? Yeah, Austin, Texas got a playoff win. Mm-hmm. We're alive in a championship. We have the chance of winning a cup. It sounds amazing. Enjoy it. Embrace the moment. I can't wait. We're three games. I mean, we you know we got to take it step by step. But we you know we have Dallas coming up. Uh, prediction. Dallas. <sighs> Knowing how Austin is, it's gonna go to overtime. Overtime. <laughs> it's gonna go to overtime, bro. And I'm 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 saying that they're gonna win in overtime by a goal. That's that's what I'm okay. saying. Whether it be two one, pinche para seguro, three two, just by a goal. Because I know Dallas has an amazing team. Yeah, um, yeah. Maybe they don't have an amazing uh, uh, environment that that we create. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's our edge. Of course, that's our edge. More, and not only that, but we trust the team to be able to take care of business. Mm-hmm. But I will say this: Austin has continued to like to Austin FC has continued to like to suffer through games, mm-hmm. and I don't see that changing unless all things are clicking. You know, right. and, that, and that takes being focused from like the beginning to the end mm-hmm. to the whistle. And not getting lost in like the calls, what goes for you, what goes against you. Mm-hmm. This game had calls go for us. And yeah, we've been used to a lot of calls going against us in certain ways. I mean, that's life. It's just life. Yeah, it's life. You just gotta stay. It's, focused. it's part of the game. It's, you gotta stay focused, yeah. man. Hey, uh, one quick note: Estel Primo de, de Nick Lima was actually the ref. 
What? He looks just like him, dude. The ref looks just like Nick Lima. <laughs> Bro, don't be spreading no conspiracy <laughs> theories, man. No, I saw him. I saw him by the turn and like, wey, se, se parece Nick Lima, wey, como el primo lejano de la segunda tía. Um, pero, este, no, let's, let's go into another topic that we have here, which is the World Cup. Um, a month away. It doesn't feel like it. And, and mainly because I, I, I know usually in the, in the, in a regular terms, the, the, the list it will be revealed for each team a month or two before, like more so about a month or two before the World Cup, right? So there's still no lists from any any teams that, you know, okay, these are the 26 that are going to be going. Um, I I hope I, I hope for the, you know, just for the love of the game, and the games actually turn out to be better than this bullshit organization thing. Yeah. Yeah, the just the of course this World Cup is soaked in in oil, it's soaked in blood, it's yeah. soaked in corruption. We get that, but we also know that we, we as football fans were like uh, uh, someone once like I don't know who it was. They described Messi like a like, like a dog. Yeah, I, like not in a fucked up way, more in a way like like he just wants to play with the ball, bro. Yeah. Once he starts playing with the ball, that's yeah, all, yeah. that's all he cares about. And I hope, and, and, and yeah, and I hope he balls out. Yeah. And us as fans, once the ball starts rolling, we forget about everything. I mean, inevitably you're gonna forget about things, and you're gonna. Yeah. Of course, I'm gonna watch the World Cup. Of course, I'm a root for Mexico. I'm a root for Brazil. I'm a root for anyone here in Latin America uh, till the end. Um, but I'm not gonna feel that good about watching this and like promoting it because of yeah. how much bullshit is into it. Yeah, I, I feel you. I think it's one of those that it's it's hard to um, just think about having fun knowing that there's a lot of bullshit that happened. Maybe another World Cup has happened, but not like in, in the level of Qatar. Yeah. Um, I mean, the corruption, like you said, the blood, the, the oil, the also, you know, in quotes, slavery of workers in the stadium. Yeah, it's like kind of a modern slavery of where yeah. they they get people from different different uh, kind of impoverished countries, like Southeast Asian countries, offer them uh, opportunity and take away their visas and make them work under very very intense mm -hmm. conditions with a lot of heat, a lot of heat exhaustion, a lot of heat related deaths and illnesses, as well as um, you know they're kind of stuck there. They're not they don't, they, they don't have enough money to go home. They don't have a visa. They're kind of stuck there working. And, yeah. like, I think the way the population of Qatar is divided, 90% of people are migrants mm -hmm. and living and working under those conditions. You're talking about people building the stadiums and people working in the service industries for those hotels. Um, and the 10% is kind of the ruling class, the Qataris that, like, you know, have wealth and money. If you if you want to get more into it, man, there's a great podcast mm -hmm. called uh, World Corrupt. Uh, they have a couple of episodes. It's a six-part series. Uh -huh. Um and it, it goes into a little bit of the history of FIFA as an organization because it didn't just start corrupt. It started with, like, good intentions yeah, to yeah. grow the sport worldwide. Mm -hmm. What kind of started changing it was the fact when te the television came out, when the World TV Cup, right. these games started to be displayed. On, it was, like, the biggest event ever on television. Yeah. So you started getting sponsors. You started getting Coca-Cola, these other sponsors. The money, man. The money was too much. The money, money corrupts all, I guess. And yeah, that, that's when uh, things started to change. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just a lot, like like you said, it's the biggest event in history. It, and, and it's hard for, like, a lot of uh, Americans to imagine that. They're like, what are you talking about? The Super Bowl? Yeah, yeah Super Bowl. No, 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 no. What are you talking about? The Olympics? There's, no, only, no, 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 one, no. there's only one. The World event Cup is the it's biggest the, thing. Yeah. It's the biggest party. It's the biggest celebration of of what we here at this podcast love to talk about life culture and football it all fuck it all hits right there yeah and it's a party that you know you have people from all over the world talking about it all over the world paying attention to it everyone you know and especially here in the u.s it keeps growing and growing i remember when i first you know my first world cup in 1998 you know the only ones like say that we knew about it was just like us and people around us 2002, it was a little different. 2006, it didn't get as much, uh, as much exposure. But then 
the English channels will start showing the games. Like, I remember England and Portugal was playing in a hotel. And then 2010, that's when it just, like, it blew out and mainly Shakira with the Waka Waka. <laughs> um, and, and so it keeps growing, like, to where now 2018, like, in Austin for the Mexico game, it was one of the most watched games that we had a soccer game in, in like, in bars. I think uh, the game against Germany. Oh, yeah. Um, so it was one of those, now imagine what's going to happen in this World Cup, how many people are going to be out um, having fun. And I, I do feel like, in a way, hopefully there's one thing that we get, like, from this World Cup is, you know, for everything that's going on in the, in the world and people, you know, going through, like, you know, mental health situations and everything, hopefully that can alleviate a little bit, you know. Um, and you just enjoy the game at, at the end of the day. Um, but... Yeah, man. Uh, you you still sticking to your predictions? Predictions of Brazil winning the World Cup? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, they got a they got a hell of a squad. Um, which is something that we want to get into. We love to uh, to have guests on this podcast of different nationalities that maybe have a huge fandom for w- one of these teams. We want to focus on like, you know, the stories and their 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 passion for that team and yeah. and and hopefully start a conversation amongst uh, different different nationalities here on otro por favor related to the world cup just to get it hyped and kind of focus our energy on that on like the the beauty of the game you know yeah so i think for for the i mean before the world cup we're going to have a couple of guests here um that you know we're going to talk more about the culture here in Austin but on my mind and what i have in mind is bring in uh, two guests, one from Chile and one from Colombia. Yeah, I want to see their, you know, their point of view about it from an outside perspective. Los que, uh, no, fui, los que no fueron. That's 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 salty, bro. Like, no, no, uh, no, no. But like, let's say, like, say for example, like, let's say, like, okay, you're not in it now. You're more neutral. Like, who do you think, without having like, a, like the the nationality passion? And I don't want to bring like like ah, uh, oh, porque no fueron que pedo, I was like, you know, like from your perspective, um. Who's gonna win that and why? Because I feel like they'll have a little more of a cold, uh, how do you call it? A little more of a neutral stance, and, and you know, it won't just be the nationality because we all want our teams to be the, the champions. But like, say for example, for for a Colombian, like why you know why do you think France can take it, or why do you think uh, Brazil can take it? And then for the Chileans, you know, like why do you think this team can take it? Um, and it'll be a lot of pretty cool, uh, like say when I talk to our friends from from you know, Colombia and Chile, they they have like pretty good uh, analogies of why a team should take it. Analogies such as like David, este Chile. Oh, shout out David! Shout out David! He has a very good like every time he talks about the World Cup, he talks about like why this team might be able to take it because he's a coach. So as a coach, it'd be pretty cool to you know have him in in here. Um, and then also bring in get, like guests that are actually part of you know the countries that are in the World Cup, but then they're actually you know like maybe hopefully if timing works well like Group A could be one episode or whatnot. What we'll have that in mind for sure, man. Yeah, and and we'd love to just hear about their culture and their country and yeah, like yeah. what makes it special. Like how how do they how do they view their 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 players and their their idols in their country because i know how we view el chucky lozano here mm-hmm. as, as as a mexican mexico fan mm-hmm. someone who feels the colors of the color but i don't know what I, I don't know how how other countries would see you know their superstars their nas- their their heroes mm-hmm. so we want to hear those stories too man speaking of heroes in this world cup of 2022 we have heroes that are doing their last dance, their mm-hmm. final chance to win a World Cup, uh, two of which in particular are really near and dear to the heart of many. And we're talking about uh, R- Ronaldo and Messi. Mm-hmm. So particularly for me, Messi, I think... I thought you were going to say Hector Herrera and Chicharito. Are, are they even going to the World Cup? Hector think. Herrera is Chicharito, unless there's a miracle. Hector Herrera, de qué va a ir, güey, para tomar tequila, qué pedo. Él y este Antuna. <laughs> no, mejor que se vaya con el Guli Peña. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but real talk, I mean, Messi, Messi has his last chance to win a World Cup, man. This is like the, 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 uh, 
the thing that's evaded him in his career, um, I think it would be a special way to go out. And I think for once he has a squad around him mm-hmm. that plays for him and it has his back. And you see it when Messi gets fouled, everybody comes and defends him and shit. Like, yeah. They have his back, dude. And uh, I'm excited to see what Argentina does in the World Cup. I do hope Mexico be shit out of him. I don't think that will happen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. If Stuber can save two penalties, I'm pretty sure Mexico got a chance. Damn. Speaking of Stuber, that guy needs to be in Team USA, bro. Take him on the bench or something, bro. Hey, Sebato. Drusy. I would, like, low-key, I would marry Drusy right now so we can speed up his process so he can get his Mexican citizenship. Y vamos para el Mundial. That's a good idea. So wh- what are you waiting for? <laughs> Let me send him a message. <laughs> you going to slide into Drusy's DMs? I don't know if he'll respond, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to see what we can do. <laughs> nah, man. Um, I don't know. You got anything else to say on the World Cup? Uh... Dude. Oh, Lil Baby. Lil Babies. L- Lil Baby's making the uh, the song for the, the World song? Cup. Yeah. I bet you didn't know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> I can't believe it. I won't believe it until we see it. Uh, I didn't even know who Lil Baby was until like you mentioned it. Oh, shit. We're going to have to put Richie on some Lil Baby. All right. Shaking my damn head, Richie. All right, cool. <laughs> I, I'll show you that. I'll put you on some Lil Baby, um, Richie. I'll put you on some no, Lil no, Baby. One, one thing that I want to say about the World Cup really quick is this feels like a transitional World Cup. Um, it, it kind of... It gives me vibes from 2010. 2006 was a, a ending period, like the Zidane period. And then, two, I mean, 2006, yeah, 2010. And many of the Brazilian squad as and well. Many of the Brazilian squad, Ronaldinho, Ronaldo. Um, and now 2010 was more of a, a lot of young players. A lot of young players. Um, and, and I feel like that World Cup was won by a team and not just a one player in particular and everyone that competed like especially in the playoffs it was a, the whole team itself without relying on one single player like that was there this world cup kind of feels like that you know like say for example you have spain that has a lot of young players yeah pedri pedri was one of them um este portugal también tiene unos cuantos jugadores mm-hmm. Um, England also has a couple of players, and I mean France is always gonna bring be bringing out players. Eduardo Camavinga, Camavinga. yeah. Uh, but uh, but actually, like Eduardo Camavinga is already established because I mean for me, hey, but he's young. Yeah, dude, but winning the Champions League. Oh yeah, he's he, he yeah, yes, establecido. Yeah, he's a baller. Yeah, and, and we'll we'll get into Madrid a little yeah. bit later. But you know, you got Gavi too uh, doing his thing for Spain. Yeah. You got you got some young bucks coming up. You got Phil Foden for England, yeah. um, Ansu Fati, Spain Fati, as yeah. well. You got a lot of young stars. It's, I mean, World Cups always serve as changing of the guard a little bit, especially one like this. Yeah. So, and there's gonna there's youngsters that that we're gonna discover in the World Cup, like that we, that we that they're not even in our radar. Yeah. But they're gonna have like an inspiring tournament where they're gonna be they're gonna be that next season in the top clubs. Shining. Wait, that's what I mean. That's what happened to Suarez in 2010. Este, ¿cómo se llama? Elsil también. Hmm? No, no, no. Elsil was 2014. Pero exactly what you're talking about. Like you're gonna have players que no conocíamos y de repente levantaron. Um, and I still think Argentina is gonna take it, and if not Mexico, you know, <laughs> or at least we're gonna beat them in that game, two to one. El Chucky lo va a agarrar. My prediction for Mexico is the same prediction I've always had for Mexico. Ganan uno, golean el otro. Ganan uno, les conen el otro y el otro a ver qué pasa. They're gonna get to, they're gonna get to the knockout stages in second place. De panzazo. Yeah. And they're gonna have an amazing uh, playoff game, and they're gonna lose in overtime or something like that. They're gonna, they're gonna break our hearts like they always do. Man, man, man. Well, they're already what, what do you hearts. think, Richie? What's going to happen? What's, what's, that? what's Mexico going to do? I know you're more of an optimist than me. No, I, I mean, just from what I've seen in the group stages, they come out like shit from the beginning, like at first, <laughs> but then they end up making it. Hey, like, but last year, uh, last World Cup, we beat Germany in the first game. We, we, we made it like second place. I mean, we could have, you know, and Juan Carlos Soria actually like said, like, mi planteamiento hubiera sido mejor contra, contra Suecia. Um, but, Honestly, dude, Mexico knows how to play the group stages. They 
they're gonna make it to the next round. Watch, it's the next round, and how they make it is what's gonna matter. In the group stages, también is like they can have a very good game against Argentina, but it could happen like what happened last year, que les goleó, que les goleó Polonia esta vez. Um, and and a lot of it is like say for example, everything can be built to where if they make if si se ponen las pilas, they can go to the quinto partido. As long as they they just stay focused, they just have to stay focused. It's key to the game, man. Staying focused and and coming out. I mean, there's very very low margin of error in the World Cup. Very low. So, um, now one thing that I also want to talk about is uh, we can jump into is el, el Premier League. Yes, sir. The Premier League. We got Arsenal on top, man. Arsenal is on fire. And I know many, many of our friends and followers, they they are on cloud nine. You know, shout out to Arsenal. Shout out to Ernie. Uh, you know, shout out to Alfie. Shout out to to uh, Mr. Mr. Bali. Mm. Oh, yeah. Big ass Arsenal fans. I mean, they're, uh, they're in a good spot. And Rem Sizzle, they, they, they're talking their shit. Wait, I I don't watch. I have not watched the game in the Premier League, and I know as a soccer fan, that's a uh, an insult to everyone out there. I'm sorry. Um, I've just been busy. I'm insulted, Richie. Yeah, uh, it's how you'll be all right. You'll get over. Nah, to me, there's like there's not enough time in the day to watch every single game you want to watch. Yeah, like if I always think about it, like a weekend dedicated to the football, I'd have like a dark room with screens all over me, watching yeah. every single game. But I mean. Life is life, dude. You can watch what you watch what you can. True, but um, I mean that's good for Arsenal, man. Let they, me tell you, they've been playing a, some amazing football. Yeah. Very team based. Gabriel Gabriel Jesus is having a, an amazing season. Um, the whole team. Uh, uh, Saka is uh, the youngster from England. You know, he had that 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 moment in the in the Euro Cup where he missed the penalty. And for many players with like a weak mentality, that can. That can break him, especially someone as young as that. But mm. he has risen past that. He's scored clutch penalties, scored clutch goals. He looks dangerous. Um, the team is playing as a team, bro. Mm-hmm. Like every like uh, many people are participating in goal scoring events. I mean, um, yeah, Arteta has created a created a monster, and I would say that they're they're the real deal. I mean, they've 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 gone quite ahead in the in the standings, maybe four points clear of uh, Man City. But I mean, there's still a lot of football to get played. You know Man City is going to get hot when everyone's getting cold. Hey, el que anda, anda cabizbajo es el Liverpool. Hey, no. So, yeah, Liverpool has a shit start. Liverpool is a middle. Sure. They're they're kind of in the middle of the bracket uh, until their recent um, game against Man City, which I know you don't watch. Premier, you haven't watched a lot of Premier League, but I beg you to watch at least the highlights the of highlights. Liverpool. Because, bro, you want to talk about what the premier style is, you want to watch the Liverpool Man City, bro. Like, uh-huh. it was like they were playing for the championship. The intensity, the coaches were getting fired up, the fans were getting fired up. Uh-huh. A little bit to the point where it crossed the edge of violence, it crossed the edge of maybe you're going to hurt someone, may, probably you, you're doing some illegal shit, I'm yeah. in the sense. But um, that's football. You know, it's it, it's borderline insanity when it comes to highly competitive games like this, dude. And speaking about Man City, they're having an amazing season too with Haaland. Uh, unfortunately, he's not going. Salud. To, salud. Unfortunately, he's not going to the World Cup. But you can only imagine if this guy were to go, he would tear it up because he's been tearing up the Premier League with hat trick after hat trick. Es otro que tenemos que conseguirle novia mexicana para que tenga. Hey, well, he's got a cousin here in. Uh, in uh, at UT, she's on uh, the uh, the number ten. She plays for the UT Longhorns. That's a good point. Um, but I mean, I see, mama, <laughs> that was loud as fuck, bro. Yeah, it's, it's my phone. You know, <laughs> I thought I died. <laughs> um, <laughs> nah, dude. That I mean, there was a point in the Liverpool game where yeah. where uh, uh, Thiago Silva, uh, Thiago Alcantara. Mm-hmm. He he does like a una entrada like a tackle mm-hmm. behind Haaland and he literally kicks him in between the legs like right in the nuts. Damn. Um, let me see if I can find a picture of it. But basically, he was trying to 
and the 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 um, Khalan family line. <laughs> Damn, that w- that would suck. Now now being able to have a kid because of Tiago Alcantara. Pinche <laughs> Tiago. Nah, dude. But I mean, the game was incredible. It was back and forth. It was a constant, constant action. Um, it ended up with getting decided after a uh, uh, clearance. Uh, it was a free kick for for Man City. Mm-hmm. Uh, De Bruyne overshoots it. Allison Becker grabs it and immediately punts it down the field and gives it, gives it to. Um, it comes comes right in the air and uh, our, the Egyptian pharaoh Mo Salah. Yeah, he turns. Right around Cancelo, he makes Otro him look, que no mundial. He, another one that's not going to the World Cup. He makes him look silly, bro, and he makes a long run and just puts it right in the pocket on the left corner. Mm-hmm. A crazy English style goal porque era de portero a delantero mm-hmm. toque a gol. It's crazy, um, but it was a crazy game. There was a lot of fouls here and there that were beating the shit out of Mo Salah. And nothing was getting called. Mm-hmm. Um, Man City did their thing. They had a lot of chances too. Uh, Haaland had a had a bad night out. He 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 had some headers. He had some chances. Didn't score. Um, a couple of shots uh, from Man City that just didn't go their way. Uh, had a goal that was called offside. But no one expected Liverpool to win this game. Yeah, and they did. Maybe this is an inflection point for their season to turn around. One question that I have for you, and I want you to be honest and serious about this. If you had a chance to pick. Three countries to go watch, you know, live there, and you had a job. You know, you're gonna be there. And your whole, you know, job is to watch the games and do reviews. Which of those three countries you would pick? Um, England, Spain, or Italy? If I had to choose one, yeah, England, England, England for sure, man. Because I feel like in England you can be in like the, the tiniest little town. Like they always say, like uh, a cold Tuesday night at Stoke. You know, like just you're out there and it's just like some players that maybe you don't know them by name, but they're gonna they're gonna play their asses off and it's gonna be a, an intense game and mm-hmm. close game, competitive game. The fans are gonna be into it. The town like literally shuts down for that thing. Mm-hmm. I feel like just the just the way that the environment is in England for 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 football for. Mm-hmm. Just and the competitiveness, even amongst like the the smaller teams, yeah, the relegation battles and stuff, it just makes it that much more of an incredible of an environment. And I would I would go to to games in England if that was my job. If yeah. I had to live somewhere, Spain. Italy all the way. Italy. <laughs> okay, okay. Italy, man, dude, I love the food. I love the just the vibes. Mm-hmm. That or Spain. Spain's Spain's a good time too. Man. They like to party. <laughs> no, you just have to pick one. Only just one. To live or no, to work? Soccer? Yeah. Premier England Premier. for okay. sure. Yeah, I, because I would for sure not be in Germany cuz I'll be drinking all the beer. <laughs> cuz there's only going to be one champion no matter what. Um but I think the Premier sounds like a, an appetizing uh plate. Uh, I think I think for what's going on, um everything a lot of it, you know, that we talk about, everybody talks about in international football is based on those two. I mean, based on that league. But Spain just has those two que no le pueden dar. And there's one team that I would love, maybe maybe one city I would love to to live and talk about, even though I'm not a fan of, it would be like you live in Madrid and just covering Madrid 24-7. Because there's always something they have to talk about, whether it's a transfer, whether it's a game, whether it's, you know, something, even as going to pierden. Cannot relate. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've been to Madrid, man. It's not my favorite. Bro. Por no. qué? Uh, just because it's, it's like any capital. I, I mean, you know, like you go to the you go to uh, D.C. here. They think they think it's the best city in the world. It's not. Mm-hmm. I mean, any capital is going to be arrogant. You go to Paris. You go to Mexico City. You go to blah, blah, blah. They think they're. No, but the only the only best city is Mexico City. I stay, by far. I stay. <laughs> but you know, like I mean, I I just didn't have that. I didn't have a good time there. Yeah. Um, I preferred. I mean, and maybe I'm. Of course, I'm biased. I preferred Barcelona. I preferred being in San Sebastian. I preferred Valencia. Mm-hmm. I had way better times there. So, um, but I, I I get your perspective. You like the buzz. You like the 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 vibe of Madrid. The, the social they're, light. They're they're, they're <laughs> always like 
they're always a story. They're always the you're always hearing like Madrid is trending because they're getting X player because they're doing this and because uh -huh. they're champions. Like they they win the Champions League over and over. They win La Liga over and over. Like the, right now, th this is a this is a fantastic era for Madrid, and they've had many fantastic errors. So I understand. I right, get right. I get uh, that. Um, that's good, man. Now let's go into. You know, talking about La Liga. I mean, we're already there. Uh, All right, let's get into it. The Clásico, let's just get it over with. Classic. Let's just get it over with. I mean, en el Barcelona está como, como yo, güey. Is this, uh, is this an elephant in the room? Dude. <laughs> hey, third <laughs> one. Speaking of, so after the Austin FC game, um, I'm walking out of the stadium. I'm like walk, returning to my truck. And of course, I, I catch eyes with uh, Hernan. Yeah. And he's like, hey, hey, coque. And I'm like, hey, what's up? And I, I go say hi to Hernan. I go say hi to uh, El Newlywed Primo. Oh, el Primo. Congrats. <laughs> um, and Brian. And uh, Hernan's like, you got to get on the mic, bro. You got to get on the mic. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, fuck. Okay, let's go. And the, the first, I think the first thing he asked me or, or mentioned was like, um, something about something about the Clásico. Yeah. And I was like, dog. Like, I just, <laughs> I'm at a high. You got to remind me of my yeah. love. Yeah. <laughs> But it's cool. It's all it's all fun and games. Just hey, cómo quedan las chivas? It's all fun and games. And hey, then y'all would have been sad. We both would have been sad. <laughs> yeah. Um. But uh, no, the classical the classical was uh, was tough to watch. I mean, I watched it at my house. I I didn't get to watch it, man. I invited uh some some friends and family uh to have brunch with with my wife and I in our yeah. home. Uh, we made an event out of it. We fucking made bacon. We yeah. made eggs. We made we cut up some fruit. We had some cafecito. It was mm -hmm. perfect. It was perfect. I was excited to watch the game, and it turns out um, the Barcelona players were not as excited as me because they came out uh, they they came out with uh, not that much of a plan against yeah, yeah. Madrid. Madrid, for for me, dominated a majority of the game. They looked like they had a, a solid game plan, continuously um, going towards our the back our back line, yeah. which looked weak. It looked like uh, they were trying to play an offside trap that, frankly, was not the best thing to do when you have uh, Vinicius Jr. and uh, players like Vinicius, players like Valverde, players like Benzema. Um, killers, dude, killers. And on the first goal, what what I have to kind of applaud, and it hurts as a Barcelona fan, but uh, you got to applaud it because it's, it's football. It's Tony Cruz. We're talking about a guy who is in his you know mid-30s mid yeah. playing at, at top flight at, the, at a top level. Mm -hmm. um, standing up to the pressure of Busquets, yanking his shirt, not diving for the easy foul and putting in the pass into Vini that uh, gets rejected off of Ter Stegen that then gets the goal from Karim Benzema. Um, that type of play, you just applaud it because, like, all right, players, a lot of players would have taken the foul there. Yeah. Because yeah. Maria Busquets, but Cruz, German mentality, the mentality of a champion stays stays on his feet uh, and gets starts the play that gets the uh, first goal from Madrid. Mm -hmm. Also... Barcelona had some sparks. They had some sparks. They had some moments, particularly one where um, uh, Lewandowski misses a it's one he should have buried. It was mm -hmm. right. It, it was a cross from Rafinha, mm -hmm. uh, right to his left foot. Maybe an offside, maybe not, but he he flew it right over the top bar. Um, he had a couple of headers. Um, it just wasn't looking that sharp out there, at yeah. least in the first half. Uh, and not only that, but I don't think Barcelona had a lot of chances. I think. Madrid did their thing and dominated possession. So we all know that when Barcelona doesn't have possession, no, ma, yeah, yeah, valeo. it's already like yeah, the game's probably gonna, not gonna go your way. I didn't watch it, so uh, you're pretty much giving me some bread over here because uh, I was actually I had to be early, um, and then I ended up just cutting my hair, and it, it just I didn't realize it until like all oh, the game started, and then you know trying to get here on time and whatnot i had to be at half squad by 11 so i think i i was like no nah, i'm not gonna stress about it i mean if we win that's good if we lose eh, oh well no excuses so, richie no excuses no, I, I know, I, dude. i'm ashamed of you i'm the worst i'm the worst barcelona <laughs> fan <laughs> the no, worst dollar fan <laughs> pero con la america es así no me lo pierdo <laughs> that's a different story <laughs> yeah we all have our, our priorities we all prioritize as well but i mean i watched it uh yeah it, it hurt me, but I, I I got resurrected later by Austin FC that day, and that's that's <laughs> life right there. So I mean, you got resurrected you by like one of those electro, you know, like pumps. 
porque si no... It was an AED or some shit. Yeah, it was... It was... Estaba... Haz de cuenta that the resurrection didn't take up... Didn't take to like... Um, penalties. Uh, actually, no. The Rusis, um penalty. Yeah. Um, pero... That sucks, man. I, uh, I did get to, you know, watch a little bit of the Barcelona v Real earlier. Oh, they won today 3-0. 3-0. And they look calmados. Um, I, I think... I think that I mean a team that they looks they look good. It's just one of those games that I'm thinking, hey, no se leon concentrados. Yeah. Um. Pero contra Villarreal, I was like, how come they didn't win the the one before? But then again, I like, well, you played Real Madrid. Um. And the one you know one player that you know from Real Madrid is este Benzema. Uh, congratulations on his Ballon d'Or. Congrats to Benzema, man. And yeah, just going through the Ballon d'Or uh, awards list, um, you have the Jared Muller trophy for the top score. Mm -hmm. um, Robert, Robert Lewandowski uh, won. Yeah. You have the uh, Yashin trophy for the best men's goalkeeper, uh, Courtois. Thibaut Courtois from Real Madrid won. Very well deserved if you remember his uh, Champions League of of uh, this last year and his performance has pretty much been clutch for Madrid. Yeah. Um, great goalkeeper. Uh, Copa Trophy for the best under-21 men's player was won by Gavi. Uh, Well-deserved. Uh, shining young youngster in Barcelona. Like, it's pretty interesting. You see all these, like, um, all these uh, awards um, that pretty much went to either Barcelona or Madrid player. Yet, we talk about the Premier League as, a, as the best league. Um, it's just an interesting thing to think about. But yeah. Karim Benzema winning the Ballon d'Oro is the... Player of the year. What do you, what are your thoughts? Deserved? Yeah, man. It's well, well deserved, not disputed. Um it's it's just that guy he he resurrected his his uh, career after Ronaldo left. Because everything just fell on him and he ended up being the player that he knew he could be. Um may, maybe when Ronaldo was there, there was just Ronaldo had, you know, most of most of the, the spotlight on him. But Benzema is, is just, I mean, it's Benzema. Question, do you think Ronaldo could do what Karim Benzema did if the situations were flipped, taking the backseat, applauded his um, his his colleague, his, yeah. his player, when they're in the spotlight? I mean, it's just a question. It's a tough question. Um, I, I think... He could have done it if he already had one, one or two Ballon d'Ors. Yeah, so I think the answer for me is definitely not. And and I mean, not not if he was blank. If it was like <laughs> if they were both going for it, you know, it, it, you would not applaud it. But if Ronaldo already won two, he'd be like, "Let me come back." Uh, I'm gonna keep. I, I'm gonna keep it a buck, man. I'm gonna keep it real. Like, I love. I love Ronaldo. I love. I love his career. I love what he's done. Um, we talked about Tony Cruz uh, yeah. earlier today. To me, he's like a, a older player who's kind of aging gracefully. He's managing to adapt his game to to ol to being an old, older player. He yeah. doesn't play as high up in the field because he knows that he he can't handle the pressure as much. He prefers to play a little bit deeper. Yeah. So that's adapting your game. That's realizing the qualities that you have and the situation of of life. Karim Benzema also adapted. In his way, when you were playing again with players like Ronaldo, you would take the back seat. You would, you would, you would feed. You would feed your goal scorer. You, you would do whatever you had to do mm -hmm. to make Ronaldo shine. You would applaud when he won. He won the Ballon d'Or when yeah, he won yeah. his individual awards. Do I think Ronaldo would do that in his place? I don't think so. The reason I say that is you've seen it time and time again. Uh, Ronaldo is someone who. Who ha who has mentally made himself into, like he has to be the alpha, the top dog, yeah, yeah. or the one that the team depends on, the superhero, the guy with the cape. Um, and when he was performing, when he's performed throughout his long, amazing career, it works. Yeah. But when you're in it, when you're in a situation where you you have to support your team in other ways, uh, whether it be through leadership, mentorship. Or just more moral support, mm -hmm. and, or listen to their coach, or it, it's just not working, and you're seeing it happen with Man United. Le un poquito más ahí. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, with Man United, I mean, obviously Ten Hag, Ten Hag has has his own his own ideas, and uh-huh. Ronaldo hasn't really fit into that. He's kind of made Ronaldo try to uh, win his position, whereas many people, especially online, think that Ronaldo's trajectory is immediate qualification to start to to play. Mm-hmm. But you look at the result, like you look at today's uh, or this most recent result of Man U mm-hmm. um, beating Tottenham two zero could have been could have been four zero if if Rashford were like sharp, and the fact that Ronaldo leaves before the game ends in, in an obvious hissy fit mm-hmm. into the locker room, it tells you everything you need to know about him. The faces he's been making, it tells you he's under a lot of pressure. I understand that because he's got a mentality of a champion. But he's not aging gracefully. And he, he's not being a leader. Yeah. He he he's kind of he's disappointing me. He's disappointing me. Mm-hmm. And and I think I, I have to say it because even if 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 Messi if any player were doing what Ronaldo's doing right now, I would I would hit him with the same shit. Yeah, like yeah. it's disappointing, dude. Um, do you think Ronaldo is? It's just like in, in a space where, like, man, he's he's because you can get tired of winning, but you can also get tired of not winning, you know, especially like you said, being in the spotlight. Do you think him not having another like Ballon d'Or run, or or say, for example, just going into situations where he's the one that's coming through, putting the team on his on his back, him not having that is being detrimental to his career. No, no, no. His career is untouched. I think his career, like right now, like yeah, right now, right now. I think, I think his current. His I current. think this is a bad spell. Uh, of course, I'm disappointed in in his attitude and in how he how he's kind of worked out this last these last months at uh, Man U. The whole fiasco of wanting to kind of like get out, but being kind of stuck, not, not getting picked up by other teams. I'm disappointed at that, but if you look at Ronaldo's trajectory, I, I mean, I don't think this will. I think people are going to forget about this. Like, yeah, they're going to forget about it because he's going to give us something else to celebrate later. We Which don't know what it is, but uh, right now the fit, yeah. the fit at Man United isn't there, and I think for the best betterment of the team, he's on the bench, and for the betterment of Ronaldo, he needs to find a way out. Mm-hmm. In a, I mean, just being respectful, being you know, a hundred percent. Clear, like he just doesn't fit into Ten Hagen's. Where, uh, where do you think he could go if he finds a way out? Uh, I don't know, man. That's a that's a question. Great question. I don't know. I think he can. La America. <laughs> In the MLS. No, I, I, he's he's definitely he definitely has uh, the talent. I think to, to succeed in any big team. Yeah, it's just right now the fit at Menu isn't yeah. working. The attitude is not there. The relationship has soured with the coach. Um, it's just not there. And may, ho- he issued an apology today on 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 uh, Instagram. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, I sent it to you earlier. But basically, he kind of apologized and saying that that's not who he is. Um, he was in the heat of the moment, and when he was a young player, he looked up to older players. So yeah. he unfortunately. Um, it's not always possible for for him to uh, in the heat of the moment. Like it, it basically got the best of him. Uh, so he basically apologized and he said that he's he's with United and United they'll stand and they'll be together again. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, I think this is written by his PR agent or something. You know what I mean? I I, I don't I don't believe it. I don't believe yeah. it. So I'm I'm not gonna believe it until I see that I see it. And you know, another thing is. With the camera show, the camera mm-hmm. show all the shitty things. They don't show Ronaldo talking to his teammates like, "Hey, Cyrus K, you know, you should do it like this," or "This is what I've learned." Yeah. Like they don't show that; they just show the, the him faces, the history faces. Yeah. So that's all we see. So there's two sides to a pancake, you know. So hey, man. I, I'm not hearing the story from him. I'm seeing this apology. I'm not seeing it on TV. So hopefully things turn around. Because I, who wouldn't love to have a Ronaldo off the bench? Kicking ass, or a Ronaldo starting for a half and, and scoring a goal, and then you know getting sub, you know towards the second half. Like who wouldn't love that that person on their team? But unfortunately, hey, right Josh now it's, it's not working out. Josh Wolf, go get Ronaldo. 
pero este um, no nah, me I think you know he just needs to find his happy place what's your happy place his my happy place pretty much anywhere where there's no bullshit <laughs> damn what kind of bullshit you been dealing with Richie uh, I don't deal with it that's why I don't I don't go through it well not to go through it but that's why I don't, I don't get in it more so <laughs> I don't know dude I have a lot of happy places I can I don't have one in particular it just depends on when and how and where and why that was deep as fuck, bro. Or actually, that w you didn't answer anything. I'm not supposed to. <laughs> I mean, do you have a specific happy place? Yeah. Yeah, it's in my backyard. When I take my socks off and the sun is setting and I walk on the grass. And just, you just uh, barefooted? I, I step on a little bit of chicken shit. I, and then I, I, go, I go see my chickens and I... I, I grab the eggs and I'm like, thanks. That's thanks, like thanks, old people stuff. Right thanks, there. little baby. Or I get on my, my, my rocking chair and I'm just like sipping on a drink, looking at the fucking sun go down. Yeah, I guess I'm a, I guess I'm an old fart. You're an old, and I'm older than you, man. I'm over here thinking like my happy place would be, if I have to pick one, it would be. I don't know. I have so many. Honestly, like I, I can't think of one specific because one that I like a lot is driving from here to Galveston or Galveston, you know, like to to Austin. Just those three hours of driving. You don't have to worry about anything but just the drive. You love driving, bro. Like anywhere. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it either, but I, I feel like it's enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. Because you stop by Bucky's and you already know un, un, una caquita en Bucky's, y luego te vas. If I could live a life without driving, I would I would choose it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Me too. No, but you love but it. I've loved, but I've lived in it and I wish I had a car. So, <laughs> uh, so no, I'm dude. a complicated, simple person. No, I, I I, hey, man, that's actually, I think it's a good segue, man. Uh, we didn't really have like an outro or reflection, but... Uh, one thing I've been kind of touching on is like we all have been kind of working our ass off in our yeah. own way, whether it be professional hobby, this podcast, or just in, you know e even life tech work, even relationships tech work. Mm -hmm. um, and many times we are like super stressed, and it just the, the, like everything is kind of like all like hitting you from all sides. So you look forward to the vacation, the time yeah. off, right? But uh, there comes times when like all right, maybe a you don't have you can't take the time off for a vacation, or you don't you can't find someone to take care of your your pets or your family or kids or whatever, or you can't um, you just can't afford it at that yeah. moment. So like, does that mean you got to live with that that stress, that fucking that thing that's like killing you? I don't think so. Something that I've been kind of like thinking about and kind of reframing is, I think about my weekends as a vacation. Mm -hmm. because you're not working right obviously it's like oh it's a weekend everyone looks forward to the weekend but you got to frame it in your mind if you frame it like a vacation like you're at home stress-free mm -hmm. and make that environment to just truly like disconnect man dude i think it's it, it, it'll serve you well and i think that's what you're getting at with like you just like that drive you know and i think that's what i'm getting at too i like that yeah, just being in my backyard not i'm not paying attention to my cell phone like putting it away and you know not worrying about anything except I have a good happy place that I I actually I enjoy like maybe an hour not an hour like thirty minutes of my day just looking at memes and laughing at dumb shit. <laughs> my God, bro! I think I just I wake I, I wake that. up every day and I have like five notifications from Richie. I'm like, oh shit, he must have been something important. And I look <laughs> and it's just meme after meme after meme. And I'm thinking, like, this motherfucker Dude. just spends all day. Well, and you know what's funny? Everybody that I talk to is like, es Richie, man. Carato mandando memes. <laughs> Dude, so, I, I no, actually, working out is one. You know, just that hour that I, I get, you know, training. And then uh, the other one is just memes. Like, just sending memes. Like, just laughing at dumb shit. Like, I enjoy laughing at dumb shit. Like, and maybe... That's why, like, sometimes I'm pretty good at saying some jokes and thinking of something funny because all the stuff that comes to my head, or like, La Cotorriza, that's another one that I, that's where I just, like, enjoy just listening to it. Yeah. That's that's good, man. I'm yeah. glad you have a happy place. I do for sure have a happy place. Don't get me wrong. I didn't know what it was until, like, 
I now I thought about that. <laughs> but oh, that's uh, that's good. Um, yeah, man, we're all gonna be back in our happy place. You know, everybody in Austin. Hopefully, we end up happy on Sunday. Yes, sir. Um, we got the the uh, Dallas fans a little bit. Did we touch on that? The with the matador statement. Mm, really quick. <laughs> I think we we almost did. Um, but oh, I just want to say like, don't kill the vibe. You know, don't don't like uh, our friends from from Somos LAFC podcast. They made a good point. Don't don't kill that. You know, you're you're killing the culture that's making your stadiums get filled. But what do you mean by don't kill the vibe? What happened? Like so, there was a Twitter from El Matador that they sent from Austin's FO about they can bring instruments. Okay, that's fine. I mean, home home field advantage and maybe whatever happened in, in Dallas with the whole everybody celebrating in the parking lot instead of so, in the, in so the field. So basically the the Austin front office has said that Dallas fans or Dallas supporters cannot bring instruments. From where the tweet says and the screenshot of the email. Right. So you think this is in retaliation or maybe a response to how Austin FC was treated after the Copa Texas win where they were made to celebrate outside the stadium? That's a good point. I think Austin FC should always want to compete with your 100% and be like, okay, cool. You know what? You gave us some shit over there. That's cool. Now here's our thing. We're going to let you bring it. But if we win, we're going to win with like our 100%. Because at the end of the day, that's what competition is about. I hate the whole like advantage of this and advantage of like, nah, nah, I want to I wanna fight you. Like if I'm going to get in the game, I want to get in the game with like, if I'm going to get in a fight with Koke, now that we're going to get in the fight and listen to soccer field, you and I, you know, going for hey a ball. Hey, man, I, I, have, I have a couple of purple toes that <laughs> beg to differ, bro. <laughs> so uh, I, I always want to compete. With your 100% and my 100%. Yeah. Not making excuses of, well, you couldn't, you know, that day you had a cold or that day I had, like, you know, a broken pinky, which I do. But um, it just, for me, is you're killing the vibe with that type of shit, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Maybe the maybe one thing, like, I can see, like, Austin FC's point is their stadium is going to be at capacity, so... Bringing instruments is not the best idea. Um, and you're playing at home, so of course you can bring whatever you want to your house. But not, you know, allowing them. Maybe that could be one thing. But it's also like, is it the money or the football? The money or the culture? Which one do you prefer? So. Right. No, I mean, we talked about this, and I, I, I agree with you, man. We, we want to create... Uh, a stadium like environment that has that has like two sets of fans that are bringing their 100%. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we're going to outnumber them already because it's our home stadium and they have a limited capacity. But in my eyes, you got to let them bring the music, yell at them bring their vibe because we got to play we we have to play our game against each other. Yeah. Just like our teams got to play their game against each other, right? Yeah. Of course it's home field advantage. Of course, we're gonna we're, we're gonna outnumber them. We're gonna outgun them. We're gonna, they're gonna feel the vibes no matter what. But like to to limit another f- supporters group's uh, ability to bring instruments and bring their culture to our stadium, it's kind of sad. I mean, and not to say Dallas has, uh, or Frisco FC has a, a great culture or anything, but you want to give them their shot to 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 do their thing and right, and, right, right. And, and come out. And I mean. You got to do it beca- for, for the betterment of the league, for the betterment of the environment, mm-hmm. for the betterment of, of just, like, what it is to be at an MLS game. And, and the thing is, like, MLS, you cannot um, – MLS should be the one that takes in charge of this shit. And how they yeah, it's, the a, it's, it's not standardized, right? Yeah, it's you, just up to the front offices. Yeah, I don't know how it works, honestly, but MLS should be the first one saying, like, dude, you can – you're allowed to do this because – for me, is you cannot be putting all these ads of people celebrating, chanting, going to it whenever you cannot bring your instrument organized. Like you're, because now now you're 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 when you're allowed uh, like away teams to bring their instruments, you have some type of organization. Mm-hmm. Like you're still controlling it. 
you know who was bringing the instrument. So you know you know the people that are going to bring whatever they bring. They're going to be responsible for their shit, whether they bring 10 drums, whether they bring only one drum. But you already know that person is going to be responsible for, for, you know, their section. And you're going to weed out all the bullshit because you already know when anything happens, it will not come from them directly. So I, I think that part right there is MLS should really look deep into, like, their priorities because as this league continues to grow, you're going to have a lot more problems between fans because of this type of decisions. Because now I feel like this certain decision that someone makes is going to be, at the end of the day, like going down and bringing it down between the fans because the fans are going to be fighting with each other. And then you can lead to altercations. And you can lead, like, you know, to to, uh, fucking two guys fighting about, you know, hell yeah, dude. We got you. You couldn't bring your shit, you know. Where that could have been avoided by letting them bring their stuff. They already, you already know you're gonna escort them out to their their buses. You already know they're gonna be coming in and out, you know, in a in a timely manner. So why not just allow it? Yep. Definitely, man. I I I think at the at the end of the day, we just want to have fun. We want to enjoy. We mm-hmm. want to enjoy that environment. We want everybody to enjoy it. Um. And it's, it's in the spirit of the game to create that. I mean, we talked about the World Cup earlier. What makes it so special? Mm-hmm. It's people from different countries coming together and, and showing you a little bit of their vibe and us watching two countries compete, two countries' history. Two cities. Two, you know, like, and now you bring this to MLS. You talk about the MLS and we're watching two cities compete, two different fan, fan groups compete. Mm-hmm. You want it at 100%, bro. What makes the World Cup special is that two countries are competing, right? Yeah. And they're bringing the best of their people, the best of their culture, the best of their music, the best of their vibes, you know? Every country has their own distinct thing. And mm-hmm. I think the cities are the same thing. Yeah. You know, like, as much as, like, the memes and, like, the banter on Twitter is funny, I don't think it, it, it helps us because we we want, we want, we want, we want cities to compete and show us the best that they have. Mm-hmm. And once we start kind of limiting and kind of dictating what what people can bring in the sake of home field advantage, I, I think it's like, you know, Jorge Turralde made an interesting point. Like, it's like tying, tying someone's hand behind their back and, like, getting in a fight with them. Yeah, dude. It's, it's stupid. It's stupid. Like, if, if we're confident in our fan club, in, in, in our supporters groups and in, in how badass we are, mm-hmm. why wouldn't we want the, the other the other club to bring their A game? Mm-hmm. I mean nah, so, and, and, yeah, I, and I respect yeah, yeah. people's opinion. You know, I respect everybody else's opinion. But at right. the same time I'm like, come on man, let's let, let's be confident in what we got. We got the best we got the best fucking fans in the MLS. We got the best club. We got I mean, let's celebrate that and compete with everybody. Right. Why one another thing like adding to that also is just as you know you for example this decision that decision of celebrating a championship should never be in a parking lot. That too. That, yeah, that you, you should sh- never allow a team you, that's just like um shame, shame on a uh, I mean it, but but I, I don't that that part right there I think it was just decided between the supporters mm-hmm. to be honest. But um uh, um that should not be, you cannot be celebrating a championship in a parking lot. That's just wrong. That's just in every level, like, you, you, for me, as, for example, if si Monterrey le ganó la América en el Azteca, Monterrey had earned their, you know, right to celebrate in our stadium their championship. Mm-hmm. For example, what if the Champions League final was Barcelona, Real Madrid, and Madrid, or vice versa, Barcelona lo gana en, en el Bernabéu o Madrid lo gana el, en el Camp Nou. You have to allow them to win it because the competition, like competition is someone's going to have to win at the end of the day, you know, in the final. Um, so I just think we they, they have to look into that deeply, in my opinion, because stuff like this, it's going to catch up because you already know people are responsible, you know. We're also always going to, you're making space and room for people to also cause some kind of violence or, or vandalism in a facility. Mm-hmm. I, I think 
and and then I the last thing we want is for that to happen, you know. I think you have to think if if if, if MLS wants to think ahead, they have to think of you know like what can we do to avoid it, but what can we do to get like, to allow to have access, knowing that the people that have access are responsible for bringing in their stuff and getting out in a safely manner, in a responsible manner, but in the matter that at the end of the day they enjoyed it and whether they win or lose, like it was a good experience. Mm-hmm. Because a culture cannot be built based on limitations. Well said, Richie. Mm. I think that's good enough to sign us off, man. A culture cannot be built on limitations. Yeah, man, for sure. Um and like we said, Austin FC, two to one. Visualize it. time. Put it in your head, baby. We see it right there. I can see Drusi coming in again. And I can see Maxi making his, you know, his score. Richie looking into his crystal ball. I can just see Maxi scoring. With a nice little like loft over, or you know, un, un, una de angulito, and then celebrating that. La flecha. La flecha. And then on the other side, LAFC, El Tráfico. Oh, they're actually about to play in a little bit. Uh, that's gonna be if we if LAFC loses, then we get we to get stay a, here. We get we another win. home game. Yeah. That's hey, Phil- Philadelphia's been in Cincinnati one zero. Uh, FYI, and LAFC. I, I think I want, just because I want to play another game at home, I want the Galaxy to win. Also, we already beat LAFC, man. Let's let's, let's, let's switch it up. Let's scrap up with somebody who yeah. we haven't beat. We haven't beat Galaxy this season, have we? Not yet. Hey, I sacaron la espinita. But this is the revenge tour. All right, Dallas, sacaron la espinita. Yeah. yeah. We haven't beat them. LA, LA Galaxy, I'd love to play them. I'd love to for us FC to play. Yeah, I won that. I won that. Uh, Just to get the other home game, man. Is dude, it's crazy the way the city buzzes when there's when there's like a, a playoff game. Yeah, you know, I I walk around downtown and people have seen me with the with the with the Austin FC shirt yeah. and my Austin FC um, canteen here, and people are like, hey man, did you watch the game or how was the game? Like, yeah. and, and you could tell these people don't follow soccer. Like they just they know that we were in the playoffs. Like it's a different vibe. To to encounter those interactions when you're walking around, it means you're the city is transforming. The city is slowly transforming into like this huge uh, juggernaut of a soccer t- soccer city. Man, we tell you what, dude. By the th- rate we're going, we're gonna need a bigger stadium. Yeah, we yeah, need sure. more seats. Um, and another thing is, um, last thing I want to touch is Remesclas article uh, Murga's out, and I was you know honored and asked to do the pictures for the article so it's great and javi's um pasión verde is going to be released on the los verdes website pretty soon they already give them everything it's already finalized so it's just a matter of when it's going to drop so we'll keep you guys posted and that's about it man el checo imagínate wey checo gana gana el américa y gana el aston fc Two out of three for me. <laughs> I'm going to have a, a yellow and blue on one side of my hair and a verde and black on the other side. Calmate, Fagundes. A huevo. Fagundes all the way. <laughs> hey, bueno. Uh, es otro episodio. Se cuidan bien. Y adiós. Saca las chelas, Fagundes. Arriba en América.